Hi YouTube, welcome back to my channel. This is Ari Ballard and this is the When Love is Alive video blog podcast. And today I'm talking about the Amber Geiger murder trial. And I just now saw where she was sentenced to 10 years. She got off easy. But was what was most extraordinary is how the brother of this young man just got up and embraced her. It was pretty amazing. But I'm gonna tell you exactly why I thought she did it. I have a theory on and it's pretty simple. She is a female narcissistic cop or a narcissistic female cop and that has everything to do with what happened that night at that apartment. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. I'm going to get right to it. Make sure you hit all the bells and whistles, like buttons, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. This trial, this incident was pretty extraordinary. And the reason for that is because this person, this Amber Geiger, was a trigger happy narcissistic cop that was trained to do exactly what she did at the so-called police academy. She was doing exactly what she was trained to do. First of all, I didn't believe, I did not believe for a second that she was at the wrong apartment until I saw the testimony of resident after resident after resident saying that they too got off on the wrong floor and a few of them almost put that card, their key card, into the wrong door. So it, it does happen at that facility. It's been changed since then. Now that everything's numbered. It wasn't numbered then. So it was an easy mistake for people to make. I believe that now. I do. I, I didn't buy that story in the beginning, but I do believe that, that that was true. That's how it started. I don't believe that it had anything to do with race. They did not know each other at all. And it wouldn't have mattered what color that he was. My theory on it is that when all the, she was sexting her married cop boyfriend and just wasn't paying attention and went up to that door and the young man's mistake is that he didn't lock the door all the way and so he was killed while he was eating ice cream watching a football game in his gym shorts. I believe that at that moment when she realized that the door was open her trigger happy cop mindset went in and let me say right off the bat and now that the sentencing's already been done it's probably after the fact but my thing was that yes she needed to be held to a higher standard than your average citizen because she's a cop and it's not because i think she deserves it because she's a cop to be held to that standard it's because that is what they demand of the people every day that we consider them authority and therefore if they demand it then that that's what they need to be held to all the time so i believe that her mindset if she had been an average person the one who went oh my god you know what's going on here as soon as the door as soon as it looked a little off but she didn't do that she got halfway down that hallway and realized that it wasn't her apartment the option of course to eliminate the whole thing would have been to oh my god i'm so sorry i'm your neighbor downstairs i'm in the wrong apartment i gotta go i'm sorry but to do that would have been humiliating for a female narc a narcissist female narcissist cop no less it would have been humiliating. He might have told his friends. He might have called her department. One of your officers just came in here with a, with a gun drawn. I, you know, she wasn't going to risk that. I believe that at that moment, she only had, her only choice was to take him out. And so she was not going to let him live. That's what I think. I am not saying it was an easy decision. I'm just saying that that was her narcissistic mindset. There was no way she was going to be that humiliated. That was the reason why she didn't perform CPR. It's the reason why she didn't call 911 right away. Okay. She called her boyfriend first. Very narcissistic move. She testified on, on her own behalf, which was also a narcissistic move. Crying with no tears. She was sorry that she didn't want anyone else to ever feel like that, standing in that hallway. How can you even say that? If you're going to get on the stand and admit that you shot somebody and apologize, apologize to the parents. She never did that. And that is why I'm so amazed 
the, the picture of them embracing just this extraordinary humanity in the face of inhumanity to me. She has, she gets 10 years to think about it. Will it matter? I don't know. She's a narcissist. There's no two ways about it. I don't believe that you can become a cop these days, that you can even graduate from the academy unless you are, unless you think like a narcissist. And her cop mindset made her walk down that hallway. And then halfway down, I believe she knew exactly where she was. It was horrifying to her. In a flash, the first thought was of the humiliation of having made that mistake. And so she just had to play it out. During the trial, she would have liked us to believe that it was some kind of like accidental home invasion, as if she was the home invader and was going to claim self-defense against the homeowner after killing him. It just was nonsense. The jury did not believe it. Clearly, they did not believe it. They found her guilty of murder, but they only gave her 10 years. And this needs to be a lesson to cops everywhere. Cops cannot be allowed to kill with impunity. They can't. They have a narcissistic mindset. Training is all wrong. Cops are not trained like they were trained just 20 years ago. They're trained to shoot to kill. If you feel just the possibility that that hand in that pocket has a gun, that that cell phone might look like a gun, or it just that the bowl of ice cream that you're holding in your hand while you're sitting on your sofa watching football. In North Carolina, just two weeks ago, the same thing happened. A cop fired through a front window and injured, horribly injured, a guy that was just standing in, the, in, in his window after hearing the cop lurking around, apparently after getting some kind of panic call. The cop fired on him twice. And then they were even thinking about charging the, the homeowner. I, it's a different world we live in. It's a different world we live in, and I, I, uh, I'm not liking it. I'm not liking it. I don't. I wouldn't call the cops for anything these days. I wouldn't do it. And you can say, "Oh, I know good cops. Not all cops are bad, but eventually they will all be bad because the ones that were trained prior to this guerrilla warfare style training, they'll be gone soon, retired or whatever." And Amber Geigers are all we'll have left. If there's one place that we need to feel safe, it's in our home. And I do believe that he wasn't going to survive that night. I don't. Up until she went halfway down that hallway, she thought she was in the wrong place and then suddenly realized it. And there's no way that she could let him live. That was a, a decision that she made because that would have been the only reason for her trying to say it was self-defense. There was no denial about that she pulled the trigger. It was just why she did it. Anyway, I just wanted to kind of give my take on that and I was just about to make the video and then I saw that hug, the embrace on the news and I'm pretty blown away by that. You know, is, will she be grateful for it? I do believe. She's a female narcissist. I believe she accepted the hug and in that moment she was feeling very sorry for herself. Very, very sorry. Very emotional about the fact that she was going to jail for 10 years. She accepted that hug. But her intention... Anyway, I hope it sets a precedence for in the future. We need to be safe in our homes. And imagine that there are people that think that the cops are the only people that should have guns. <laughs> really? Uh, no, that's okay. Don't give up your guns. No matter what. Anyway... Thank you for joining me today and watching my video. You can find me on the NarcissisticPersonality.com. My books are on Amazon. And I'll catch you in the next video. You have yourself a wonderful afternoon. I'm Zari Ballard, and this is the When Love is a Lie video blog podcast. Bye-bye.